In this video analysis, we're going to be looking and examining the top five passers from the 2012 Women's Olympics as ranked by the FIVB. And the, we're going to start off with the number one passer um, from the 12 Olympics, number 16 from Brazil, Fernanda Rodriguez. And we're going to take a look at several things with these top five passers. And one element we're going to look at is the athletic uh, elements, the athletic mechanics that are similar between these players and that are different as well. And we're going to look at the technical mechanics and try and note some similarities as well as some differences. One of the things you can see here with uh, number 16, she's starting off in reception against Jordan Larson and uh, she's in a very upright position. In fact, the red line uh, indicates for you how, uh, how upright she is as Larson is getting ready to um, toss the ball and serve receive. And we also have some green lines uh, at the feet of number 16, because I want you to notice how, how active her feet are. The ball's been tossed by Larson, and you can see her feet have moved uh, a couple different times already. And her feet are underneath her hips, basically, which is a very good position to um, move in any direction. You can see here, Larson has tossed the ball. Number 16 has now loaded her hip, and she's created a very nice movement hip angle. I think these two things that she's done, creating this movement hip angle with, um, with her torso in relationship to her hip and having her feet active and below her hips are athletic um, techniques as opposed to skill techniques. You can see number 16 continues to move her feet as Larson approaches the ball and she stays in a fairly uh, high position, but her hips are loaded. Her feet continue to move as Larson begins her swing. Hips stay, stay loaded and right on contact. You can see that she, um, her head is up, her shoulders are up, but her hips are loaded and her feet have moved maybe six or seven times from the time Larson started her approach to this point in contact. We're running the um, clock so you can see um, some of the elements of the speed that the ball is getting from the servers to the passers, just like in Jim's serving presentation. Uh, going back to an athletic element, look at 16. You can see how tucked her arm position is right now. Elbows are at about a 90 degree angle. Hips are still loaded. She's now moving to the ball with a pretty wide base, but she didn't start in a very wide base. As she starts to present her arms to the ball, you can see she went from that um, bent elbow position to a straight position. And you can see how much movement there is with her platform into the ball as the indicated by the two straight green lines. And then you can also see, I think, a technical mechanic where she um, kind of recovers position facing the target um, as and after the ball came off her platform. Again, if you look across the net, um, 16 Rodriguez is at middle back, and you can see how upright she is again. She's receiving the serve from Larson, so her feet are moving. She's got her feet underneath her hips at this point. She's created that loaded position at her um, hips, but her torso and head are still up. Again, these are athletic mechanics as opposed to skill mechanics. Larson contacts the ball. And you can see how um, Rodriguez went from a very narrow base position with her feet um, as she was moving, as Larson was getting ready to contact the ball. Now as the ball's almost on her, she's gone to a very wide base position. Gets the ball in between her feet. And as she gets ready to contact the ball here, you can see she's facing the target on contact with her hips and her shoulders. Now that's a, that's a skill mechanic as opposed to an athletic mechanic. And 
you can see that ball got to her in 0.68 of a second. Here she gets ready to receive the standing float serve. You can see she, um, she has some different athletic mechanics here. She is already in a loaded hip position. Her feet are slightly wider um, than her hips, maybe about as wide as her shoulders at this point, but she's also going to be receiving a slower serve. You'll also see that she doesn't have any pre-move with her feet um, before the ball gets contacted. And uh, so those are all athletic mechanics. When we look at skill mechanics, you can see she's got a staggered stance. She's in position five, uh, receiving the serve from position one. So she's receiving a line serve, but she has her, uh, her feet and hips and shoulders in such a position where she's already facing the target. And this is a skill mechanic. Right as the ball gets ready to get contact, you can see that left foot starting to move and her and her body was um, moving a little bit there. And now her footwork to the ball is very quick and with little short steps. This ball goes outside her body. She contacts the ball and then you can see her body recovering, hips and shoulders recovering back towards the target. And that ball got to her in 1.16 seconds. And again, we'll take a look at her in position five, receiving, receiving a serve from a server in position one. You can see her um, feet, hips and shoulders are all facing the target. And then you can see as this serve comes to her, She's going to move with that bent elbow position. She's going to present her platform pretty close to her body here and then move her platform into the ball towards the target. And you can see her weight is kind of shifting in that direction as well. And that ball got to her in about 1.2 seconds. Again, same situation, receiving a ball um, from a line server. Not too much foot movement when, when she's receiving from the standing float. Moves with a wide base, presents her platform pretty close to her body, and then moves her platform into the ball and towards the target. Again, looking at number 16 in middle back. Feet are wider than her hips when she's receiving this jump float. She's in a nice movement position, movement posture with her hips and torso, both feet moving at the same time and uh, in very short, quick steps, contacts this ball and not only moves her platform into the target, but also into the ball towards the target, but also faces the target with her hips and shoulders. and. Uh, the moves she's doing with her body and platform, I think, are skill mechanics versus athletic mechanics. Again, receiving the line serve, the standing float this time. So whenever she's receiving a standing float, her feet are a little bit wider, but she's in that nice movement posture with her hips back and her torso and head up, elbows nice and flexed. She keeps the nice hip position when she's moving. And here's an example of the ball getting outside her body to the left where she has to be able to um, handle this ball. She isn't able to face the target on contact. She does recover after she moves her platform into the ball to face the target, however. One of the things we're gonna talk about and see in all these examples is that um, the skill of passing like, like 
all the skills in volleyball, in my opinion, are very situationally dependent, which means we've got to be training our players to handle different situations with, um, with whatever skill we think is going to help handle the situation the best. That ball got outside her body to the left. Um, we can see that in most of these instances, she's able to move and receive the ball uh, in between her feet. And in those instances, she tries to face the target and push the ball to the target. When she can't, she gets in an awkward position. Um, she's still got the technique to use. Uh, in this position here, she backs up to the right, never opens her body away from the target, and then pushes the ball towards the target. So different situation, ball pushing her back to the right compared to the situation in the previous um, clip where she was moving back to her left. Again, receiving a line serve from position one, facing the target with her feet, hips and shoulders. And this ball is going to move outside her body to the right. So in this position here, she does more of an angle pass where her hips and shoulders are facing away from the target. But she's still able to direct the ball very well to the setter. Um, different situation. She needed a different skill mechanic. Again, receiving a line serve from position five. You can see the athletic things that she does. Moves with very short, quick, um, small steps. Uh, hips are always loaded. Torso is always up. Here is she as she gets ready to receive this ball, her hips get down and uh, almost parallel with her knees. Platform presented close to the body and then you can see the big move into the ball with her arms to send it up and towards the target. And uh, I think it's important that we look at athletic mechanics versus skill mechanics. I think athletic mechanics are going to be very similar from player to player. In skill mechanics, there can be some tolerance. There's going to be more tolerance for difference. Um, because obviously if you train different skill mechanics, players can get proficient at them. But athletically, we should be doing very similar things. The number two passer in the 2012 Olympics was Libro from Russia, uh, number seven in your screen. And she'll be, she'll be receiving this uh, jump float serve here, and we have red lines underneath her feet. So you can see as the ball is being tossed what she does with her feet. And you can see how her feet move underneath her hips and they touch the floor several times. And uh, she gets in a fairly upright position, similar to the first few, few um, examples we saw of Rodriguez from Brazil. With her feet underneath her hips, it's easier to move and respond to the ball and adjust to the ball, but she's also got a very nice hip-loaded position. And again, those are athletic mechanics. And now we get to the skill mechanic part of it. She um, gets pretty wide here with her feet. She presents her platform pretty close to her body when she extends down and then moves her platform into the ball, as indicated by the two green lines. And on contact, she's facing where she wants the ball to go. Those are all skill mechanics. Again, we can see in this example here how she's going to start in a nice loaded hip position here. Again, watch how active her feet are as the um, server gets ready to toss and make contact with the ball. You can see her feet moving. She's reading and reacting before the ball is even contacted by the server. And then after she's moved and responded to the ball, now she can drop her hips down. She gets into a nice wide base, presents her platform very close to her body as indicated by the red line. And then you can see the move she makes into the ball with her platform as indicated by the yellow line. That ball got to her in just over one second. And uh, we saw similar athletic uh, mechanics as the player from Brazil and some similar skill mechanics as the player from Brazil facing the target um, on contact with her hips and shoulders and making the big big move into the ball with her arms. Again these were the two top um, receivers as indicated by the FIVB statistics at the 2012 Olympics. Again, you can see the loaded hip position, although she's very upright, her hips are still loaded, and by her hips being loaded, that's going to allow her to move. The ball gets tossed, 
She gets her feet moving before contact. She gets in this very high position here, but her hips are loaded. And now she starts to move in a more loaded position. Ball gets outside her body a little bit to the left. So she ends up handling that ball facing um, to the left of target, but is able to move the, her platform into the ball and direct the ball right to the setting position. Again, I'm just going to play this and let you take a look at it now that we've uh, seen some of these. Now that we've seen some of these um, moves by the players, we should be able to see some of the athletic as well as technical mechanics that they're using. And then also see how situational some of the technical moves they're making. Ball, in that case, low to her left. She had to angle past that to the target. That ball low and to her right, she dropped her hips down, kept her shoulders up, and was able to pass that to the target. Bigger swing on that one to get the ball going to the target. That ball takes her down, she has to lunge into it a little bit. I think it's important that we look at situations um, that players get into and try and train the skill to fit the situation as opposed to trying to make one skill fit all situations. Um, Nicole Davis was ranked as the fifth passer at the 2012 Olympics. We'll take a look at what she does and you can see some similar athletic things here. She gets in a loaded hip position. She gets her feet moving before contact upright with her torso. Moves with very quick small steps, presents her platform close to her body initially, and moves her platform into the ball, and in that instance was facing the target. Nicole's at middle back on the other side of the net. This situation, the ball gets out to her right. You can see the big lunge step that she takes. She goes out and meets the ball with her platform facing the target, even though her hips and shoulders are facing off the court. This is a technical difference, but still effective. Again, Nicole's upright right before contact, feet moving, gets in that nice loaded position while the ball's in flight, drops her hips down low, gets the ball in between her feet, moves her platform towards the target, similar to what we saw the Brazilian player do earlier. Here's uh, Jim talked about short serves in his, uh, in his session. Here's one example of a, the only short serve I could find in the matches I looked at, and you can see how easily it was passed and how... Uh, how uh, effective the offense ran against it. A couple other receivers we want to look at. Um, the Libro from Italy was ranked in the top five. And you can see technically she's more of a left hip passer, so she doesn't really have anything facing the target on contact other than her platform, but still very effective. So these are some skill differences, but they're still effective. Um, looking at Number 16 in this one, who was also in the top four passers. You can see how similar, even though she was starting with the right foot forward and facing away from the target, when she gets the ball in between her feet on contact, she ends up with her hips and shoulders and platform facing the target and moving her body into the ball uh, on that low serve. Again, she started right foot forward, but on contact, she's going to be facing the target with hips, shoulders, and platform, and platform moving into the ball. So even though there are technical differences, we see technical similarities, too, between all these top passers. In this one here, you can see dramatically how her hips and shoulders and feet are facing away from the court as the server is getting ready to handle the ball. But she looks very similar to all of our other passers we've looked at so far athletically in that her hips are loaded, her um, arms are tucked into her body. She's moving with very short, small shuffle steps. Her platform presents close to her body, and on contact with the ball, she's recovered into a position where her hips, feet, shoulders, and platform are all facing the target, and she's moving her platform into the target. 
So in conclusion, we saw some elements of passing that are athletic, and those things are be, would be um, hips being loaded, in several instances, feet below the hips so that the players can move and their feet are moving um, prior to contact with the serve. The torso is upright, so the head is upright so the players can see the ball. Uh, in several instances, the feet were active prior to the ball being contacted by the server. These passers move with their arms bent. Um, they had short, quick steps, um, very precise. This helps make precise adjustments to the ball. When they presented their platform, oftentimes it was presented close to their body and then moved into the ball towards the target. Uh, they move in a high position. They take their hips down as the ball gets closer, and they can get their feet wider at that point. Uh, Lastly, um, the skill differences that we saw between these players is not as significant to me as the athletic similarities that we saw. And I think it's important, like I stated earlier, that we look at skill in a situational setting where the ball that's low to the right, high to the left, high to the right, um, low to the left, we can have skill choices here, but they must be trained so that the skill becomes automatic. I think the greater similarity that we see in all these players are the athletic similarities with the hip-loaded position. Um, several of the players moved with their feet fairly close together while the ball was being tossed by the server and their torso was upright so they could see the ball and then they would move themselves into a low position. I think those are all athletic similarities that we, that we should consider training consistently.